By late next year, Iowa hog producer Rick Chipman should be able to point his livestock trailer in any direction and within four hours reach any of 11 hog packing plants. We've been blessed with a lot of packing uh, space in this area. Um, unfortunately, uh, the industry as a whole uh, needs, uh, needs more. Uh, we have pushed our packing capacity uh, to its limit the last few years. And so it's a good thing that we see additional packing spaces open up. Chipman, whose Chipman Farms near Harlan will feed out nearly 60,000 hogs this year, said he's cautiously optimistic about the five new or renovated Midwest hog processing facilities that will be opened by fall 2018. It shows the vibrance and the growth of the industry. We really like how companies and groups of producers are investing tremendous amounts in new technology and state-of-the-art facilities. We certainly like the competitive spirit that we have between the packers when we uh, go to make contracts. The five hog packing plants will ultimately have a combined slaughter capacity of at least 9.5 million hogs annually. That would represent about 8% of the 118 million hogs slaughtered in the U.S. in 2016. The supply is already set on how many market hogs are grown. The demand is determined by uh, how much people want to eat pork in the U.S. and how successful we are at exporting pork outside the country. That is not going to change as a result of new plants being built or not being built. Prestige Farms plant near Eagle Grove, Iowa is expected to open in November 2018 ultimately processing 10,000 to 12,000 hogs a day. According to Ron Prestige, the additional plants should create more competition among packers for market hogs, which could make for increased producer profits in the Midwest, as the facilities aim to operate at capacity when possible. If the supply of hogs increases too rapidly, however, prices could dip instead. We, of course, saw this happen in 1998 is when you run into a situation where you actually exceed shackle capacity, at which point packers really don't have to bid anything for hogs because they've already got all their, their shackles filled. The new plants feature more robotics, snap chilling, and low impact livestock handling, which may offer an operating advantage over older plants, primarily within the Midwest. Increasingly, pork plants are leaning toward vertical integration with owners or partners supplying a larger percentage of the animals, rather than buying on the open market. The Prestige Farms plant in Iowa plans to harvest some of its own hogs, but will buy open market hogs for about half of its first shift supply. If a second shift is added, those hogs will all be purchased from other producers. The poultry industry has evolved to a point where it's almost entirely vertically integrated. I'm not going to criticize other companies that have moved towards a more integrated model. It's not really the big motivation for us. We've just seen a tremendous amount of consolidation in the uh, packing industry and the pork business, and we kind of felt like for the, for the health of the industry, it'd probably be good if there was a little more competition and some new packers. In Wyndham, Minnesota, a group of individuals, including hog producers, spent nearly $70 million remodeling a beef packing plant that had closed less than a year earlier. Now open as prime pork, the renovated facility brought 300 plus jobs back to the community of 4,500 when it launched last spring. Company officials say 80% of the hogs will ultimately come from either plant owners or permanent suppliers. The ultimate goal is for prime pork to sell a consistent product. All the hogs that we get from the three producers will be basically fed the same diet and be have the same sire as far as the boar. And that is really the key to the customer, is to ensure that when you buy a pork chop today, it's going to taste the same today as it does a month from now. Employees are already processing 3,500 hogs a day but the final objective is to slaughter 6,000 a day by year's end. In Sioux City, where the new Seaboard Triumph Foods plant opened this month, officials said they will have to be particular when buying one-third of the hogs from independent producers. 
The company, which hopes to add a second shift next summer in order to process 21,000 hogs each day, wants to make sure those additional hogs also meet quality and traceability standards demanded by a global marketplace. We're also pretty proud of the, the control and the, the quality that that brings by having um, literally the, the ability to bring uh, feed to the hog farm, to the, uh, to the processing center, to the, the package, and, and then delivering that to the customer. Is, it, it generates a very high quality product. Our requirements with our open market hogs are that they're essentially identical in, in uh, configuration, the genetics, nutrition, animal care, all of those requirements are, are the same as, as if they were internally sourced. Chipman understands packers need to meet the demand for consistency, but worries what it would mean for the industry long term if packers continued to raise more or all of their own hogs. That's been a difficult uh, thing for me to, to kind of chew through. And it would be very damaging to independent producers like myself, particularly if the shackle space was completely tied up. When I've approached packing companies in the past, they have seemed to want to keep a balance between ownership and buying from individuals. And that's a good thing. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.